Think not the Lord came to be peace on this earth. He came to give us a sword. Shalom, my name, my Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watchman. Time of Night Watchman time. Commentary, information, Bible, prophecy, and stuff. And today I'm going to enjoy a little cup of coffee as I go. <clears throat> you know, you would figure when I start this whole thing off, you would think. <laughs> the first thing you do is learn the alphabet. <laughs> so here we are, more than halfway through everything. We're going to, we're going to learn the alphabet. But we, there's 22 letters in the ancient Hebrew alphabet, as there is. Well, I don't know if today's modern Hebrew is, but the um, we're going to cover that. But we're going to just first cover the first 11 and then go into the final 11 for the next portion of this. So you see the Paleo-Hebrew Paleo alphabet. Letters, symbols, numerology, and words. Now, if you happen to hear some music in the background, i got to give this out to place uh, or people of Whole Tones by Michael Tyrell. I highly recommend get into this. Because a lot of what we're discussing, I, I think it's closely associated to the very thing that Michael Tyrell was compelled to do. And I think one is connected with the other, especially the ancient Hebrew with whole tones. So by all means, check out Whole Tones by Michael Tyrell. It's a lot to listen. It's good for you. It's healthy. And it's God. So, And we're going to get into that as well. But I think we're going to get into the word, uh, what is it, the mem today? You remember the mem? Yeah. Hmm. Love that coffee. All right, so let's move on. All right, so remember, look at the ancient Hebrew again, the meanings, the numerology, and everything in between, if you will. We'll be trying to stay. We'll be staying away from the uh, modern Hebrew because this isn't about modern Hebrew. This is about ancient Hebrew or the Paleo Hebrew, the meanings, the symbols, the frequency of these symbols, and what they mean to us on a personal level. So let us go on to the, the very famous and well-known letter. The Aleph. Yes, the Aleph. It looks like it is an ox. That's the symbology, just like it is on the screen. Let's see if I can get most of that here. I clearly have very little technological wizardry here, but that's the Aleph. So Aleph basically means power, authority, or strength. Uh, you also use the numerology in, as one, which is normally associated with being the number that refers directly to God. Also know that the word independence is attached to this number as well, for it excludes all things that are different. Number one. And who is number one? Of course, God is the one and only God. Now we discussed, of course, in all earlier videos regards to Echad, Achad, and Yachad. <clears throat> we won't get into that today, but understand that there is more to God than just being monotheistic or trilogy or seven spirits or anything else. He's God. So that is the beginning, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph. Get it? Got it? Good. Next letter in the Hebrew alphabet, or ancient Hebrew, is the Bet, which means is family, house, and in, or like go in. This goes with the number two, generally linked with the word separation, for it deals with things that are divided or things that bring about division. Again, the interesting thing about the bet is how the word was given to Moses in the symbol of a vortex. Interesting that the bet is just that, is a vortex. It is both increasing as well as decreasing. It's a matter of, uh, let's say, three-dimensional perceptual view, if you will. If you can see the vortex, it's kind of like you look at the center of the vortex. Is it the part that's closer to you or furthest from you, or is it both? And, of course, when we go further on, we'll address the chet how the paradoxical inversion is pretty evident throughout the Old Testament, especially when it comes to those words or letters that we present. Yet, this is the bet, meaning family, house, or in. Basically, this description of what would be like a family tent, if it was divided by the male and female, or the, the husband and wife uh, as compared to the children being separate with that little curvature inside. That's another meaning, of course, the way of looking at it, hence the family, house, or in. And of course, back then we're talking about tents. Although there were houses, there, there were physical structures back then as well during the time of Abraham. Because if it wasn't, there wouldn't be a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know that's, that story all too well. So this is the bet. Observe. Like a vortex. Then is the gimel. We haven't gotten to this as much as we should because none of the words we addressed has the gimel in it. The meanings is to gather or to walk. Gather or walk. Now look at the symbol. Look at that symbol as 
to use for gather. And then look at what they're using in the imagery next to that. You see what they're using? Huh? Neat. Anyway, this comes under number three is the gaining of one's approval or being able to view things from within its entirety. The number also deals with things that have become solid and complete. The number three is also used when describing the Trinity or the Godhead, divine perfection. The number three has also been associated with the concept of spirit and life. Remember, look at that symbol. This is the gimel. To gather or walk. What are you doing? You're walking in the Lord. What are you gathering? Wheat. You're looking for the sheep. And the time for the gathering is nigh. Oh yes. It is happening even as we speak. So you look at the tools they were using and look at the symbol for the gimel. Can that be a coincidence? I don't think so. Let's move on. Then there is the dalit. Its meaning is the move, hang, or entrance. Now look at the symbol, of course, and then look at what's next to that. You see that little hanging over the tent? And it's also number four was God's creative works, or perhaps Earth's creation as a material completeness. That's the number four. I'm sure you've heard the four corners of the Earth, or the four winds, maybe. I'm not sure how far you've gone in your studies. But yes, four is... Like that of a billion. And what else is for? You're wearing the tzitzit around your garment and the four corners of your body to remind us of God's word, God's law, and his commandments. So essentially look at it as a tent cover or tent head um, or something that hangs from the tent that covers it. A tent door. Do tents have doors? Tent flap. There you go. So that's what we're looking at. Hence the analogy of the tent on the right as well too. So we take we take the ancient look, we put it together to more modern symbolism, and this is how it applies. Could it mean other than that? I'm sure it could be, but again, that's up to your perception and how the Holy Spirit deals with you. Because as we addressed before, we're talking about a language that's far more fluid to our understanding than one singular way of thinking. Again, we're dealing with an abstract here. But yet, at the same time, just like all water, it has to run in the same direction as the river flows, which is the word of God. So the Dalet, meaning move, hang, or entrance. The number four, God's creative works, or perhaps Earth's creation as in material completeness. Hence, the four corners of the Earth. And no, the Earth is not flat. No, the Earth is not square. <laughs> I am not going to go into that. All right, so let's move on. Then, of course, one of my other favorite letters is the hey. Hey! Meaning look, reveal, breathe, or behold. That is the hey. Is, 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 it, no, I don't know, is it no coincidence the fact that the hey looks so much like that image on the right? Like, hey, I'm over here. Right? That's the hey. To look, reveal, to breathe. <sighs> Reminds me of a story back in the day where I almost drowned, but that's the story itself. And I don't want to have to digress anymore than I have to. So, all right. So the hay is the number five. Jaron Link with one having grace and redemption. God's grace or the life that he gives that's moved by the spirit. Yes, that is it. Hey. I think my wife said something about it. It looks like a cactus or something. It looks cool looking like that cactus. Right? Eh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, then there's the Vav, meaning add, secure, or hook. That is the Vav there. Those are the images that co coincide in a more modern-day look. So hook is like as in a tent peg, or secure in your tent. Uh, it goes on to number six, which is dealing with the number of man. Know that this number is also used when referring to human labor or secular completeness. It is also attached when describing the constant battle between man's flesh and the spirit that lies from within him. Now, but you know, and that's just, again, look at that, look at the uh, Vav, right? Look at the top of the Vav. You see two separate ent areas that are interconnected to one. It does, doesn't that kind of describe us as man, that we are combating our flesh with the spirit and vice versa, only to become the one man, both man of flesh and spirit? We are made one. Echad, achad, yachad. 
which is another study in itself, but there it is. Remember, back in the days, you know, during the Paleo-Hebrew times, this is, as a matter of fact, language. And we discuss how language is also nonverbal, which is like 80 or 90% of our language. And all you have to do is draw a picture on the ground, and you pretty much get the idea of what these people are trying to say. Interesting, right? And we look, look at the Vav as not just as a tempe, but possibly even a crutch. That is my own take on that. How accurate that is? I don't know. Seems pretty synonymous. Just that in which we hold together or put down we, is the very thing that holds us up. Hmm. Food for thought. So again, it is the Vav, meaning add, secure, and hook. Next. The Zion. See, we haven't gotten this one yet either. The Zion is meaning as food, cut, or nourish. And the number seven says, uh, the seven number, which is it is, is obtaining some type of spiritual perfection or spiritual completeness, describing the covenant between man and God. Now, the Zion is supposed to represent the very symbol over there, which is supposed to be that of a mattock, another tool used in the day for agriculture. I mean, think about that. And you know, I can actually see that within the confines of the image of the Zion. Hmm. I mean, it, may, it could be something else. Uh, maybe you, you you see something different than I see. But I almost see it's like, a, a, what was it? A mirror image of itself. Just within the confines of the Zion. I guess depicting on how that image is written. It could be upside down, right, vice versa. Oop, lost my cloth. Uh, tell you what direction it's going in. Are we cutting into sin or are we cutting into righteousness? And what nourishes us? Of course, every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Zion. That is a Zion. Next is the chet. Notice the chet means outside, divide half, or divide in half, which conforms to the number eight, which deals with one who abounds in strength. That's the number eight. There's other symbols and meaning, me, meanings to the number eight. Uh, some people call it eternal. Uh, some people say completeness. But this is generally the perception of what eight is. Now, it doesn't mean those are wrong, because, again, we're dealing with something rather fluid here. So when looking at number eight, or the chet, I should say, it gives the meaning of a wall. What more come than the wailing wall we see in Jerusalem? Or that of a ladder. We talked about this before. And or a fence, which divides and separates from one side to the other. We talked about this in regards to the paradoxical inversion, which is in our early video. By all means, check into it. And that, my friends, is the chet. That's what it looks like. Remember, it's kind of like the statement, like, what do I have to do, draw you a picture? Well, that's exactly what God did. He drew us a picture. <laughs> and then the pictures are within the confines of his written word, or the ancient Hebrew. Let's move on. The chet, outside, or divide in half, okay? Which also symbolizes any one of those things. The wall, ladder, fence. Things to think on, things to meditate on. Next is the fet. X marks the spot. Kind of reminds me, well, no, actually the maps that show X marks the spot has no circle around it. So that'd be quite not it. Hmm. That'd be something else, which I think we have later on. But the fet's meanings are surround, contain, and mud. I imagine the reference of mud is when you have a basket of sorts, which is essentially the meaning of a fet, it carries mud. And what do you use the mud for? Back then, you used to build homes and houses and temples and all kinds of interesting things. And then the letter Thet covers the number nine, which it normally deals with judgment or the finality of things. Basically, it's used when judging man and all his works. Is it is an interesting coincidence the United States Supreme Court and its nine Supreme Court justices? Hmm. Seems like one definitely coincides with the other. So they are Thet. <laughs> surround contain or mud i guess if you're found guilty you're made into mud yeah, yeah, yeah. this number also has been used to describe the perfect movement of god now remember when we saw the simple we saw the symbology we talked about this before how the fet is if you look from above the basket you see it there on your right you will see the seams and chances are the seams look much like we look 
at the Thet. So that's kind of will help you kind of remember or memorize, if you will, the symbology and its actual meaning. Think about that. It doesn't seem like, you know, the, the symbology does not go far from the meaning or the explanation of the symbol. That's the beauty of this whole thing. Again, it's all about the picture and what's the picture say. Or picture glyph or pictograph or however you want to refresh it. So this is the Thet. Usually referenced as a, a wicker basket, as we have there in, in the image. That is the Thet. Then there's the Yod. Remember the Yod? Those kind of like put one on top of the other picture. And the meaning is work, throw, make, or praise. You see the symbolism there? Arm, strong arm. We talked about this before. It is a strong arm. There's nothing passive about the word of God. It's in a position of strength. Not just strength in physical strength. We're talking about strength in character. I mean, look, look, at, look at David, a young boy at the age of 16. It doesn't mean he was super strong like Samson was. He had strength and faith in character and was able to slay a giant. He was able to put it in perspective, God compared to the giant. What does a giant compare to God. He's a small, tiny little ant in comparison. So meanings, work, throw, make, and praise. That is the Yod. The Yod covers on the number 10, which is associated with a completeness that happens in some type of divine order, or something that's completed during a course of time. Now there's nothing that is left wanting from within the cycle the number 10 has just completed. Now, in today's society, this number is looked at mostly when referring to some kind of ranking or describing something that's considered close to perfection. You always hear like the top 10 or I, you have to count of 10 before I ba 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 ba. You know, see, so 10 is a pretty popular number even to today's uh, discourse. You think it's a coincidence? I don't think so. So this is the Yod. Again, the Yod. Work, throw, make, and praise. Symbology is that of a strong arm. Again, we've talked about this before. God does not speak in a position of passivity or weakness, but that of strength. Strength and character. That is the odd. Now the cough. This is what we're going to end on, the cough today. Now, you're probably very familiar with the symbolism I have with it. You might have seen this somewhere before, sometimes in cult shops and jewelry shops and stuff like that. So this is where it comes from. <clears throat> the ancient Hebrew letter of the Paleo-Hebrew is the Kaf. Look at that. Look at the symbolism there. You know how people talk about the all-seeing eye? Well, guess who the all-seeing eye really is? It's God, the Almighty, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. This is the Kaf. Essentially, it's the hand of God, or open hand of God. He's showing the symbolism right there as the all-seeing eye in the middle. The other one in the far right there, which you'll find in a lot of Jewish uh, jewelry stores, is, is the chai. We've talked about the chai before. Or the chet. But that's today's modern Hebrew within the Star of David. And I, and I love when people say, oh, the Star of David is a pagan blah, blah, blah symbol. It's, no, no. You see, again, God creates, the devil perverts. The origins, like for example, we'll be going into that in the next portion. Ion is an eye. Well, the eye of Horus is not original. Sorry, it's uh, it, it's the ion. It's the eye of God. So yeah, think of the beginning, the creator himself. Who was created first, the creator or created? <laughs> I mean, come on, use some common sense here, folks. So, oh my God, it's a hamsa. No, no, it's it's the it's the cough, all right, which means bend or open or allow or tame, all right. That's the symbology there. Cool, huh? Hence, the cough is also that of the number twenty. It is at times linked with the expectancy of things that were to happen. The number is often times used in reference to things that deals with a great magnitude. This is a, the cough or. Today's mind use, I guess, we call it a hamsa, but I don't go by that, of course. It's a cough. This is what it is. And interesting thing, they, they mix the, on the far right there, the hamsa, they, they mix the star David in with a chet, with a yud, and, and up with a cough. So you actually have three, three letters and a symbol within one cough. 
Neat, huh? It's kind of cool. And the other one, the one there, it was the bluish and the eye in the middle. That's the Kaf with the eye in. <laughs> it's Hebrew. Amazing. See, this is what happens when we don't go to the root of our language and where this all came from. When it comes to the word of God. So again, this is the Kaf. We're going to be ending on this one today. A meaning, bend, open, allow, tame, or in a sense, the hand of God. It's an open hand. So he comes to you openly. It's not a closed hand, it's not a fist. He comes to you openly. <laughs> this is the cough. I don't know, us humans, it just cracks myself up sometimes. All right, so this is Time of the Night, Watchmen. I hope you enjoy these first 11 letters of the Paleo Hebrew. It's symbology. I don't know if you want to put it to memory. But remember, if, but if you do happen to see the symbol, you kind of, you know, put it all together. Look how it comes. Look at that. It just, I don't know, this seems too easy. Think is the cough as a hand or a palm. Yeah. Not to be mixed with palm reading. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody, just whatever. Anyway, so it's time tonight, Watchmen. Hope you enjoyed the study. And I hope you enjoyed the background music because I'm not sure you can even hear it or not. But uh, this is going to end up the cough. We'll see you next time in part two. The final 11 letters of the ancient Hebrew. <sighs> and I just hope and pray you all will walk in the narrow way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Cough!